we've got a little crew with us. This is Ramona, she's my daughter. And this is Chris and Erica, they're the animators that worked on uh, the trailer, so we're gonna do a little co-presentation today. And uh, their kids, Harper and Milo, who, and they're all about to go on vacation together and are here like right before they go on the plane, which is crazy. <laughs> they made, and they made it. I was tracking them the whole time. No jumping, Ramona, okay. So this whole thing got started in 2015 when this one came into the world. Yeah? I know, that's you. <laughs> Do you want to sit with them so you can see the screen? Why don't you go sit with Erica? There you go. All right. Good job. Uh, so anyway, I don't know how many parents are in the room, but you know, everyone, what everyone says is true. You know, life has changed forever, but uh, the, one of the bigger things that changes is suddenly you have this like, whole world of things that you want to make less ugly and better. Uh, you know, the world of uh, kids stuff is improving and so artful and crazy and there's a million kids books. Uh, I never felt really confident making a children's book until I was a parent, mostly because I don't like to do things that I don't feel like I have some sort of understanding about. And then once I had children, I felt that, you know, I knew enough about that world to sort of edge my toes into it. Uh, one of the things I didn't realize at the time though was that there are, there's just an endless need for children's books. There will never be a time in which there are too many children's books. So we have like 300 books at our house that all of us are bored with. And so it's just like, if you have an idea in your head to make a children's book, make it because there's a desperate parent out there that wants your new content. <laughs> Uh, and at the time, uh, Ramona was super into reading. She's always been into reading. And when we were doing bedtime books, uh, these categories sort of started emerging. There was the goodnight objects category, which is all based on the popularity of goodnight moon. But there's a lot of really terrible books within this genre. Like basically all of the goodnight San Francisco things are just direct, they're terrible. And then the, uh, the bedtime routine reinforcement books, which are always, you want, I know, those are the books that we have. Uh, <laughs> bedtime reinforcement books, which are always led by, you know, a beloved television character. And then the books that aren't actually meant for children, but are like the things that your parents buy you to tell you about how profound it is to have a child that makes you cry. And so those are the like parent cry books. And I'm like a very logical person when it comes to making things. So one of the things I wanted to do was create a book that was about inspiring kids to be, you know, be better people. But um, the idea of having it be at bedtime gives like a time for reflection. And one of the things that I felt is missing from a lot of aspirational kids books is what happens when you don't meet your aspirations. So a big part of my book was sort of dealing with forgiving yourself for not actually meeting your goals. So I started in this very nerdy way by looking up lists of positive attributes and some MIT student did a really good job of putting together hundreds of them. These were the ones I sort of culled together that I thought were applicable for kids and then I narrowed it down to these guys for the book but I narrowed it down to far more than that and I was like maybe I'll do multiple books whatever I'm definitely gonna do a second book but <laughs> anyway I started working on the art and uh, I just got really inspired to like throw myself back into doing illustration because I hadn't done illustration for a long while. You know, as I ventured into lettering, it got less and less illustrative as time went on to the point where it felt, I felt really rusty as an illustrator. And this felt like I was accessing my younger self. I know, it's tomorrow I'll be brave is on the screen. Uh, <laughs> and so I felt like I was both accessing my younger self, but like somehow had this mysterious ability now to like redo my young work, but as a more uh, established practiced person, so that was really exciting. And so the book culminates with these two spreads that are kind of like the most important part about the book. Tomorrow I'll be all the things I tried to be today, and if I wasn't one of them, I know that it's okay. But tonight I'm very sleepy, so now it's time to rest. Tomorrow I'll be all these things, or at least I try, I'll try my best. And like the idea of actually sort of reviewing your day and setting intentions for the next day is something that doesn't exist in a lot of kids' books because people don't actually allow kids to experience those sort of complex emotions, but anyone that has had a small person knows that they are very complex little people and that we need to have higher expectations for sort of what they're capable of thinking and doing. So in 2016, this is where the project was at. I was just doing all these sort of color explorations and trying to figure out if I was gonna letterpress this in the future, how would I do it in four color? Uh, this is what this project was looking like at the time. Uh, she was just, in between baby and toddler. Check it out, Ramona, you're on the screen again. Look. 
And then uh, Oddfellows had approached me about doing a logo type for them, and this is the status that their logo was at at the time. And so we went through rounds of exploration, and uh, the center one is the one that we ended up with as the final logo. And it was such a fun collaborative project. And like, I feel like it's rare where you get to work with other creatives so uh, intensely and sort of back and forth. And those are the projects that end up feeling the most fun, where you're just promising each other, you know, your forevers, and you're marrying each other on future creative projects. And so uh, part of it was we sort of worked out a deal where it was kind of half payment and half barter. And I was like, what am I going to ever have them work on? And then, because in 2016, the book was at this stage and not in the final stage that it was. Uh, so when I actually came back to them in 2018 and I was just about to send off my final files to the publisher, yeah, good idea, Ramona. Why don't you go sit in one of those chairs right there? Uh, it was just, I, I was totally pumped that I finally had an excuse to use all of my animation credit with them. And so in 2018, this is what this lady looked like, you know, a much different person. And there was even a second human in the mix. Uh, so time changed quite a bit from the beginning of this project to the, the latter half of this project. And uh, I'll let Chris and Erica take over now. So that's what this project of theirs looked like in, at the beginning of 2018. There's babies everywhere. Um, cool, yeah, so these are our humans. Uh, 2018, about when Jessica reached out to us and said, okay, you know, I finally got the thing that we can make together, and we were stoked to, to, um, uh, get, to get to kind of bring this book to life. Um, and like she was saying, just like kind of working under the pretense of barter and kind of like, you know, friends at that point helping each other out and make a thing was really cool. And then also like we are usually so involved in the illustration process when we do the work that we do that it's nice to kind of just like be handed like a super beautiful thing and be asked to just make it move. And then this is a, an awesome design decision that a non-animator like non would make because this, this dragon was not meant to like fly, let alone, or walk, let alone fly. And that little leg, like, you know, just. Yeah, an animator would, would never place a foot there because they're thinking like how it's gonna move, but it's, it's a perfect that Jessica did. It works perfectly as mm -hmm. it is. So it was sure. great to team up with. <laughs> no, no. It's a nice challenge. And now Good challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like so much of the work we do is, um, we, this is something we have done for Cartoon Network, and like Jessica's work is so crisp and so clean and so beautiful that we thought like what we want to do to kind of evolve that just a little bit is to do it with cell animation, so that um, I think like the normal way to approach it was like let's just do an after fix or like rig a character and it'll be kind of like slightly robotic and maybe a little stiff. Um, but we thought, let's try it, try it and do it this way and just bring some of the, the gestural quality to it. <laughs> Cell animation lets you kind of do all these like weird things that, that um, I don't know, are just super fun and kind of zany. And even if we only get like 2% of this in and, and, and the, and the book film, like it's worth it. So this is like, I'm just gonna take you through like a little bit of the process um, really fast. And the, the first thing that we do is just kind of like rough, start to rough out the scene and, and, and the performance a little bit. And we started out thinking like, okay, we, we got this knight and this dragon, and maybe they're just going to kind of like go at each other a little bit. But we wanted to push the, push the performance a little bit more, so we're like, okay, let's have them kind of like parkour across the type while the dragon kind of like weave through. Um, you can see on the sword here, that's just like a teeny bit of that, that smear stuff I was, that you saw in like the Ren and Stimpy uh, gif. That just just makes it feel a little bit more gestural and not so kind of like stiff. Which we wouldn't have been able to do if we'd just done it in After Effects, like most people would have done when they saw Jessica's work. So, doing it frame by frame was definitely worthwhile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. That too. That's so yeah, just kind of blocking it out, here, and now we've got the guy kind of jumping along. The dragon's breathing fire. The hands turning the page. Um, you know, start to do the body of the dragon. Get the wings going. Here's kind of him snaking through a little bit, and we've got the legs yet to do. Here's how we kind of <laughs> <laughs> figured out what to do with that last leg. <laughs> See, that's not playing that quick. Um, and just like little details of like, oh, the fire is not really burning, the guy's just kind of like heartwarming his shield. <laughs> and there's the final shot. So we were finishing up all the animation, and in 2014, ah. oh, okay, now you wanted to do it too, got it. 
In 2014, I had done this album art for my friend Olga Bell, who uh, is a really good friend. She was the, actually the only legal witness on my husband and my wedding. Uh, and at the time, I had done it like just totally for free as a friend favor, not knowing that there was ever a moment where I could come back and go, hey, actually, could you do this thing for me? All right, that's enough. <laughs> But uh, that's sort of how we ended up assembling the dream team, was just sort of like friendships and favors across the board, which is, I feel like, how a lot of amazing creative projects uh, happen. And then we even got some tiny collaborators to be a part of it. So Ramona and some of her best friends, plus Harper, uh, participated as our narrators of, of it. So, uh, And then Olga has welcomed another small person into the world. So she couldn't collaborate, but you know she's only like three weeks old now. <laughs> future. So anyway, without further ado, and we've got sound on this, so that should be good. All right. So here is the trailer that we put together for the very first time. Tomorrow, I'll be adventurous. Smart. Tomorrow I'll be brave. 